Welcome, Natalie. <laughs> Do we have to say anything to the Faking It podcast? I'm Miriam Hart. <laughs> and so, this is Faking It. Dina Dina, a rich man's world. Have you listened to any of my- Is that how it goes? <laughs> something like that. Have you not listened to my podcast? Um, Not really. I listened to one episode with your mom. Okay, so you listened to the one episode and about I sex. And I listened to one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. Yeah, it was just like, I don't know. I want to hear this. So yeah, I brought you onto this podcast because I think a lot of people have questions about us and our relationship and what the fuck is going on. And I thought that maybe we can just clear the air a little bit and tell mm-hmm. people how our about our relationship and kind of maybe give them all of it. Like how we got together. All of it. All of it. Yeah. The how tea. We, the tea of what it was like being together, hmm. why we ended the whole story. Um, yeah. where we are right now. And so, yeah, I thought that maybe we can share that with my faking it fam. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. All right. So you want to, do you want to kick it off and say like how we started, how our relationship started? Um, yeah, sure. So our relationship started by Miriam swiping right. <laughs> she swiped. You, wait, okay. Yeah, continue. You did swipe right. Yeah. But, okay. You're right. I, you didn't, didn't technically swipe right on me. No, I mean, I, no, you smashed with me, I matched back, mm-hmm. um, and then you told Wait, me- guys, just so you know, sorry, it's okay if I interrupt you for yeah. a second. I just wanted to say that my, the way I, I swiped with Natalie was I asked her to watch a Disney Plus film with me, and it worked. So just if anybody wants to do that, it works. What did I put in my bio? I put- Like, um, whoever has Disney Plus. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll go on a date with- Looking for somebody Disney. who has Disney Plus or something, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. So cheap of me. <laughs> like buy Disney Plus. I genuinely did. <laughs> Whatever. Uh huh. It worked. It worked. I, I got a ton of responses. It was a very successful line. If anyone wants to. All right. So then, yeah. So that I had that line. Went on a date. Went on a date. Um. Watched a Disney movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and after that, we hung out. <laughs> Should like, you say anything else or no? Uh, Should I say anything else? I feel like we already said it on the show, didn't we? It doesn't matter. It does. It comes out again. Yeah. What is it that you want to say? I just want to say that was my first time sleeping with a girl. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That was, so that it's was the first time deal. I had sex with a girl. Was the Disney night movie. It was not my first time I had sex with a girl, but. All right. That was clear. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, should I take over? I can, we can go back and forth. Yeah. So then we were dating for like, we started dating for a little bit for like two months, I mm-hmm. would say. And um, then I think, yeah, we just started liking each other and it wasn't mm-hmm. like official. There's nothing that was official yet. But then when no. I was leaving in the summer and you were leaving in the summer, we were both leaving you were going to Sweden. I was going to travel. I think we dated for like two to three months. Before I before, left? Before. Yeah. I think we, what is it? April or something? Yeah, it was April that we met each other. April and then May, like and then left May in June. left in June. So it was um, like two. Yeah. And then in June, we had such a funny conversation. Do you remember that? No. Before we left both. Oh, yeah. Or before I left to go home for uh-huh. a little bit. Mm-hmm. We were like, what are we doing here? Yeah. We needed to have that conversation because we were both leaving each other. Yeah. And our, well, we're, yeah. But we were both like, let's not put anything on it. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. If we want to be with other people, we'll be with other people. Yeah. Mm. I think we both said that we're open yeah. to being more serious, but we don't know if now's a good, like, we don't want to say anything yet just because we're about to both travel. And so we'll see how we feel. Yeah. I also, think that's what when, I, when I went home over the summer, I was going for like, Two months. So I was going to be gone for right. kind of a while. And yeah. our, whatever that was, had gone for so short. Because mm-hmm. we only saw each other for like Not once that many a times. week. Yeah. No, it was like once a week because we were both so busy. So yeah. we didn't really, it was not like we saw each other every day. Right. And you were flying back and forth and mm-hmm. I was like in school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and playing tennis. Yeah. I was playing a lot of tennis. Yeah. Um, so we hadn't really been with each other for that long. Totally. 
So it was, I think that was that we did not U-Haul. No. Nice. We did not U-Haul. That's contrary to so many yeah, lesbians. We really did not. We did not. We really took our time. Yeah. Like, so then it was, we traveled for a month and then I came to Sweden. Mm -hmm. And then during that time we talked like every single day. And yeah. that, and that was a sign. It became very clear. That we both when wanted we to When we left. Be. That it was like it. Mm-hmm. We literally FaceTimed every single day, yeah. texting all the time. Yeah. You even told me before I left, you were like, I'm not a big texter. Right. I don't like being I'm on still the phone not a big that texter. much because yeah. I, I like, I'm so busy and I stay busy and I don't want to like do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was like, well, <laughs> she's texting she me every day. She texting me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I'm getting selfies and mirror <laughs> oh updates my gosh, all the time. It's so funny. It's such a throwback you're thinking so about cute. this. You were like sending me like selfies in the mirror when you like thought you were cute. And yeah. I remember taking like, those photos so and like trying to get the perfect like, angle. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> and being like, oh, this is good. And then sending that photo, you know, like editing the I lighting was like, a little. like, you look so cute. You're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I'm like, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. It's <laughs> so, actually funny. Yeah. I remember actually another moment was when I was in Paris and I think it was before I saw you. And I remember going to a mall with like my sister or something Mm -hmm. and going to like the jewelry section. And I'm not a big jewelry person. Like everybody knows this about me. I only wear what people give me Mm -hmm. for the most part. But I was like looking at the jewelry thinking like, what would Natalie like, you know? And that was like the first time that I actually ever started like looking Mm -hmm. at jewelry. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like I literally almost bought just like this Dior necklace. I was like. I don't think you got me anything. Did no, you? I didn't. I didn't buy right, it. Right, right. I just, this is something that happened, you know? Right. I was like, where is that jewelry? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I lost it. <laughs> I was like, oh my you God. Would, if you like, would have it. You would not lose it. You would no, not lose it. No, I still it. have that. Yeah. Which is also funny. That you still wear that bracelet. Well, how early your mom got us these. Yeah. Yeah, my like, mom actually got Natalie the first piece of April, jewelry. Fun fact. May, in May, we went out with your mom for brunch. Yeah. And she got us matching bracelets. Mm-hmm. Which is a very bold move to do when totally. your daughter's only dated someone for a month. Yeah. No, it was more than a month, though. It was like a month and a half. A month and a half, probably. Yeah. And so you're the first girl I ever introduced yeah. to my mom, too. And then oh. she literally just went, she went, we went to her mess store and she was just like, yeah. oh, let me buy this for you guys. Yeah. I was, and like, I was like, oh, wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> this is it's not like my girlfriend buying me a bracelet. It's like my not girlfriend yet because we only dated for a month and a half. Her buying mom. Buying me a great bracelet. Yeah. It was crazy. But it's a good bracelet and the fact I that you still wear it. I'm still wearing Show it. Show the people what it is. Yeah, it's super cute. It's, yeah. I've had it for like a year. I don't more than a year I don't now. take it's it off. It's been almost two years now. Yeah, I don't really take it off. Great quality or mess. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mess ad. They're sponsoring this podcast. I'm joking, they're not. Wish. Unfortunately, maybe they should. Um, but but yeah, so then I there was a month and then I came to Sweden. Um and then I remember the first day that I was there. We were yeah. like sitting by, Sweden's beautiful, y'all. Just so you know, whoever, people who are not from Sweden, go to Sweden in the summertime. It's so nice. Yeah. It's so peaceful and calm. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting, you live on the lake yeah. and we were looking over the water. And then we like both asked each other at the same time, pretty much like said like, yeah. oh, I guess, I guess we're girlfriends now. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like, do you want to be my girlfriend? And you're like, do you want to yeah. be my girlfriend? And I was like, okay. And you're like. I think it was the first day you came. We were like, was the first I don't day. know, laying in the couch and we were just like, so we've been talking. I was like, have you been with someone else? I, I don't know if I asked you that. I don't think, I don't even think don't that think came up. But it was just like. We both knew that we didn't, you know, like. There. No, which is very clear. Um, and I think I started it because I was like, so are we something now? And we're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I remember just being like, okay, so you're my girlfriend. And then, oh my God. Remember? So cheesy. I know. I was like, girlfriend. And you're like, yeah, you're like, girlfriend. Like, I guess it was just me doing that. Yeah, I think you were the only one doing that. <laughs> I am very cheesy. Uh, I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so then that's how we became officials after, mm-hmm. this is literally like the least lesbian experience, like story for a lesbian yeah. couple. Like we waited three and a half months to be official, like even saying I love you. So let's go to that. Let's fast forward to the first time that I love you. I feel like actually there's one thing I want to talk about though, mm-hmm. faking orgasms. When did mm. you realize that I was faking orgasms? I asked you super quickly. Well, how fast was it though? It was not, it was like... Probably the third time. No. Yeah, it was pretty quickly. When really? I was like, are you faking How'd this? you know? Because like, I don't know. Tell it's me. just something when people, when it's like this classic faking, like. Was I like I moaning know. and like. Yeah, you're like, and it was like kind of fast. And oh, I was like, okay, this is like, that was fast. Like, I don't think she actually. <laughs> so then I just asked and like, you can like somehow like. See on like the body expression if someone 
orgasms or not. Mm -hmm. And you were just giving the vocal. <laughs> so I was like, hmm. <laughs> I think she's faking. Have you ever been with somebody who's faked it besides me? No. Nah, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone has been. But, <laughs> um, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're like, like, why? This is what you said. You said, why are you faking orgasms? Yeah. Something like that. I was like, why are you faking this? Like, I, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. You know? And then uh, did I lie to you or did I say I am? I feel like I said I am faking them. No, yeah, I know what you said. What? I was like, did you, did you orgasm? Or like, did you come? And you were like, a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, there's no little bit. Like, either you do it or you don't. Like, <laughs> I, I generally say, yeah, I think you said that the, that might have been the first time or second that we slept with each other. When I asked you, like, did you, I didn't call you out for faking it, but I just asked if you came and you were like, a little bit. And I was like, <laughs> Girl, like, I wasn't born yesterday. Like, For me, I was like, maybe you can work out some little bit. Like, I don't know. I was like, that's not how it goes. That's funny. So, yeah. Okay. I think that's when I knew. But then I, like, brought it up the next time. Got it. So you brought it up. So this is definitely a part in our relationship, the whole, for me, the whole orgasm thing. And this is where Natalie was, like, fucking amazing. Also, the second time we yeah. hung out... You said that I was the first girl that you'd been with. Oh, yeah. So then it's also a higher probability that you hadn't. Because uh -huh. I don't, like, I have a bunch of friends that have never um, had an orgasm with guys. It's very common. Mm -hmm. But with girls, it's not. I don't think it's that common. It's not. The data actually shows, I think it's like. There's data 80, on this? Yeah, there is. In uh, women on, like, women-woman relationships, it's like 80-something percent. Yeah. That, like, both people orgasm yeah. as opposed to, like, woman with a man. It's, like, less than 30 percent. Yeah. Um, I would assume that, too. So that's the data on it. So it is very cool unlikely. Stats. Yeah. Which is very interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, I would say another part of like a thing in our relationship, but Natalie was very, always very good. She's very confrontational. So you're yeah. just like, why are you faking orgasms? And to me, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Like this person is just confronting me about things. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to handle it. Cause I was, I was not confrontational at all. Um, and that was something that we had to work. Like I had to work on that. You were really good about supporting me with. Um, and yeah. got through the whole orgasm thing. Eventually had my first orgasm. Yeah. Cool. Exciting. Nice. Uh-huh. And then there's a whole story there, but this is also something that we talk about a lot on the show, like the internalized homophobia. Yeah. I've talked about that a lot. I remember um, something else I was confronting you about. Yeah. It's like, I was like noticing that some stuff wasn't like, like you weren't enjoying some things. And I was like, do you not like this and you're like what and I'm like no if you don't like it you tell me and I don't do it or right. if you like that tell me so I'll do that um but that had to do with like a lot it wasn't just in bed it was like we totally. would be like oh what restaurant do you go what do you want to go to and you'd be like what do you want to go to and I was mm -hmm. like no like what do you want to eat yeah because you would always like kind of please me with like oh I want sushi okay let's go get sushi or you know I was very like what do you want to today oh I want to watch a movie in bed. What do you want to do? Oh, well, I'll do that too. Right. But you totally. didn't really want to like, I don't know. No, no, you're hundred percent right. Like that was something that like, I was still, I'm still working on too. Like yeah. I haven't, that totally. hasn't been fully resolved yeah. yet. I would say that like need to please a partner yeah. in a sense. So like that's too totally. extreme. That's yeah. not healthy for either person, No, you know? And that's probably just because of where I came from. I mean like, yeah, no. 100%. Yeah. The, I would say like in the relationship stuff for me, that's, where my community is still living in my body or like still yeah. living in me. Like I think I've gotten over all the other things for the most part, but mm -hmm. when it comes to a relationship, like that's something yeah. that's still actively working on. Um, yeah. So I got, like you got a lot better at it though. Oh, like yeah. listening to yourself, just mm -hmm. like speaking up. Or was. Yeah. And I think I'm very lucky that I had you to like not hate me or not, be upset by and be so patient with me for the most part and be like consistent and say, Oh, like, is that actually what you want? Or are you just saying that because you feel this way? Yeah. And then being able to talk to me about those things, you know? Really? Um, okay. So that was something was the pleasing. Yeah. And then definitely work through that in our relationship. Uh, and then let's skip forward to I, the I love yous. Or I, do you want to talk about it? I mean, we don't have to talk about sure. it, but okay. I think for me, like, I, we said it like five, I said it to you. You said it to me first yeah. mistakenly when you were drunk once. Mm. And it doesn't I, really count, but like, sure, it was out there. But you meant it. I mean, yeah, I meant <laughs> it. But I feel like if someone would tell me that drunk, I would be like, oh, 
Yeah, doesn't count. Totally, which is what I thought. So I didn't know if it actually meant anything. But yeah, we waited five months until we said, I love you to each other. Mm -hmm. Or I waited five months. You waited like four. Mm -hmm. And then... uh, (laughs) I waited five. You waited four. (laughs) (laughs) That was a month earlier than you? Yeah. Jeez. Mm -hmm. How did I do it? Whole month. Tough. Mm -hmm. But, But then, like, to me, even right now, I feel like there is still love that I have for you. You know, like, even though we're not in love with each other anymore Mm -hmm. and we're not together anymore. There's still like, I have ever since that moment, like the love that I felt for you is still there. It's still just like love as a person, Mm -hmm. you know, it like it went from being in love to just, to me, it's kind of the same. I think that's why it took so long to say that to you. Because it meant that like, it's not that I'm just in love with this person. It's that I love this person Mm -hmm. and I will love them for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know? And so what? (laughs) I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, what are your thoughts on that um no i mean it's just a different kind of love mm-hmm. no <laughs> that's what i was saying <laughs> oops um sorry just got a little uncomfortable <laughs> but i hear you <laughs> um yeah cool, so cool. <laughs> great you're like mariana why yeah fast forward to us doing a reality tv show together yeah want to talk about that sure what's it like being in a relationship with somebody and filming a reality tv show i'd say when we were going through it i would have just been like no like whatever it's like an experience um but like now afterwards i would say it's really tough yeah like i don't think if i would want any relationships to hold in the future i would not Put it through a reality show. Mm -hmm. It's just like a lot of breaking down your emotions. A lot of like talking about like uncomfortable stuff in front of like cameras and like putting yourself out there a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very stressful for a relationship. Totally. Yeah. You spend a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. You spend a lot of time together with like a lot of like lights on you you know and it's just like kind of straining the relationship a little bit Mm -hmm. like I think like I might be wrong in this but I think it's part of why we broke up so soon we would probably have broken up eventually anyways Mm -hmm. but I just think it like speeded up the process a lot I think yeah I think like it was the like the reality show did add a stress on our relationship Plus everything that's going on with my family. Yeah. Oh yeah, that too. Like I think oh that God. was the biggest strain, you know. Totally, it was like a lot at the same time. Yeah. Um, and I, I also thought it was super like weird, and I wasn't that like comfortable. Like it was just hard. I don't know. I wasn't that comfortable, so I started overthinking myself. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, just being very self conscious too, which I, I. You know, like now afterwards, looking back at it, I was like, geez, like, why did I care so much? You know, mm-hmm. it should just have, it's easy to think back at it, but I should just have been more in the moment, just, right. you know, not caring too much about how I look or how I sound or, you know, someone mm-hmm. actually commented on my Instagram. They were like, how does it feel being the only person in the show who doesn't dress fancy? <laughs> such a big insecurity I was of like, yours dude i was like i tried yeah like i remember it was such a I, big like i i'm sorry i don't dress up more than that that's mm-hmm. my whatever that's like, crazy that's like stupid hate i mean though. who gives a shit yeah but, uh can i swear yeah beep no beeps no beeps no beeps oh, wow this is an unbeeped um, pop podcast okay. beep free but um yeah it was just funny i mean because i i was like dude you're really on point mm-hmm. that's so <laughs> but, funny you know i mean who cares yeah. But I definitely think it's hard in a relationship to be in a show. Mm-hmm. No, I think you're right. I think it was it was definitely tough. Like, we tried our best, you know. We communicated as much as we possibly could about everything. It was, like, too much communication. But that's the thing. It was, like, a lot. And since we yeah. still were fresh in our relationship for the most part, it was, like, seven months or six months into yeah. a relationship that we totally. had to... Like, and I was, like, I was, like, going to school, like, playing tennis, like, applying for jobs. I just had so much going on too and then you had I mean I was also around but like everything with your family right. and like everything being like upside down you know it was yeah. just a whole roller coaster period mm-hmm. moving in quickly too I think also was like we needed it because of just life and like a, but then I do think it added a little bit of stress too 
I mean, to be honest, we basically lived together before that. I genuinely just did not have my closet here. So I don't think it was a big move. But like, even though I don't think that we should have like been that much, Mm -hmm. like I should probably have just been at home a little bit more, but it was just hard logistically. Mm -hmm. That's true. You lived in Queens and I was in New York. So it was like a far trip. Everyone has seen where I live. Everyone has seen where you lived. People have said what they think about it. Everyone watch My Orthodox Life if you want to see where Natalie lived. Oh my God. (laughs) yeah yeah all right so then that was what it's like being in a relationship together is anything else like on the tv show is there anything else that we should mention there do you think or they they're all asking if we're still together and why we broke up so i think we can move on to that just like the ending of our relationship Mm -hmm. we stopped filming it went two weeks went by um and i think i just noticed something was like really different in your headspace Mm -hmm. Um, and being myself, I had to tell you right away that I thought something was up. Um, and you being you not lying, also being straight up with your feelings, just told me that like, um, I don't know where I'm at anymore. I need to think about it for a little bit while being gone. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then. I mean, obviously that was a whole roller coaster because it came from nowhere, pretty much. And then um, I kind of just like not freaked out, but I like definitely was like, I don't know. I was for sure crying a lot that week. I was everything was like super crazy, um, just like overthinking things, like seeing you hang out with other people, never calling, never texting. Like, got super insecure if you like were hanging out with other people or doing things, even if you didn't, like, you know, I was just super insecure that week because I just, like, didn't know, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is this happening? Um, And I basically forced you to come back Mm -hmm. within, like, three days. Like, I did not want to give you space because I just... I remember I was like, if this is where you are now, it's not going to change. Like, Mm -hmm. let's talk and then let's not... because. I'm very much an overthinker. Like when something is in my head, I can't get it out. Um, So I remember you flying back like that weekend or whatever when it started. Um, And then us just talking through it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we pretty much broke up. And like, I think that for me, I was just in a really bad place, you know, like with everything that was going on with my family, I was straight up depressed, you know, like I was not doing well at all. Yeah. I think that was probably the lowest point, one of the lowest points in my life, you know, where I was, I I legitimately contemplated getting a RV, buying an RV and driving. Oh my God. I'm serious. It's like, and then I had that, I like literally, I literally contemplated getting an RV and driving to the middle of America and just like going on hikes for like a month. Middle of America. Like I literally contemplated that. And then I'm like, wow, I can't believe I'm contemplating this. Like, that's kind of crazy. That's not good. You know, I should probably see a therapist. My sister told me that. She's like, Miriam, you need to see a therapist right now. So I did not see a therapist. I probably should have. Yeah. But I was just in a really bad place. And I think that I wanted to end the relationship with you because I associated like what our relationship was with like some of my depression. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't fair to you, obviously. But either way, I was thinking of staying at Stanford and you were staying in New York and we just stopped being together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. It was just, like, such a shock for me because you, I think you left to Stanford and two, three days later, we started, like, fighting a lot because it was just, like, something was just so off. And it's very easy to, like, notice those things because it's, like, your habits change. Like, Mm -hmm. you didn't call, you didn't text, you were out super late, you were, like, going to parties a little bit more. I was not going to parties. Were you not? No. Yes. No, I was not. One, two, or three. No. <laughs> I mean, okay, you were just out late with friends. Yeah, I was just but spending like a lot of time with people. Uh, I, I mean, of course you were spending time with friends, but you're a person that goes to bed at 10. No, you no. Know? I think like for me, I was like very happy to just like be back at school, you know, and just like away I mean, from yeah. all the chaos that was going on in this house. I mean, it makes sense. You yeah. just want to like I also turn your mind myself. off and like use things yeah. to not think about it. But for me, it was just such a like turn upside down because obviously I stayed here. So like my life kind of stayed the same, but without right. the cameras. Yeah. Um, she was just a very, a, like a huge shock. Mm-hmm. And yeah. 
then but it's always a shock for people though isn't it it's mm. like everyone always says like oh but she told me she loved me the day before he right. told me we were planning our trip for two months out and then he broke up with me it's like always like that it's mm-hmm. like you know I, I think that's like so common and everyone always says that though i don't think that was any different mm. yeah and sometimes like people don't fully say how they feel right away either, you know, like they wait yeah. until, which I think also was something that I should have done better. You know, I should have said earlier, like I'm feeling some kind of way and not like pretend that, or not even pretend, but just like want it so badly to be okay that I don't bring up yeah. any discomfort that you have because you don't want to have those hard conversations. Right. But that doesn't work. That's something that right. I learned, you know, like. I just think that. it's like, you can't drop the bombs when you've like moved back like you know like those should have come like a week earlier right. when we had time to talk or like yeah time to figure things out or time to like end things when we were together like right. they shouldn't come like three days after you're moving and be like oops yeah totally. like, i don't want to do long distance or you know whatever mm-hmm. it is yeah but, like it is what it is. and then <laughs> happened then <laughs> two months later so then this happens and we're still talking to each other like uh, every single yeah. day we haven't really said what the reason was, except for, well, I guess, depression. Oh, I mean, like, it was mostly that, and then we just, me being in California and you being in New yeah. York. It was like the me whole, being young and, like, wanting yeah. the... I also have had a long-distance relationship, relationship in the past, and yeah. I just, I can't do long-distance relationships. Yeah. I don't think anyone can really do it that well, or you have to be really freaking strong. Right. So... But I think we're too young to be strong for totally, that stuff. Totally, totally. It's like, so, it will just hold you back. I don't know if I ever told you this, but like the day that, like the day I left after we broke up, I was on the airplane and just pro tip, everyone do not go on an airplane when you break up with somebody. <laughs> just don't do it. Just don't yeah. do that to yourself. Don't subject yourself to that. <laughs> it was a terrible, terrible experience. I literally could not stop. I literally, I, I, cause you know, I changed, I had a name change, right? So my name was Miriam Hundler. Now it's Miriam Hart. Oh yeah. So I had the wrong ID. Um, going through the airport. I had my Miriam Hensler ID and it was Miriam Hart on the yeah. ticket. And so I remember I wasn't able to get on the plane. And first my thought was like, okay, maybe this is just a sign that I'm not supposed to be bringing up with Natalie. <laughs> like that was my first sign thought. Number one. <laughs> I was like, Jeez. maybe like I'm supposed to turn around right now and go back, you know, like, yeah. But then I was like, and then, so it was a girl who's the person checking the, to go through TSA. So I just went to another person. It was a guy and he looked at my ID and he saw that it said Miriam Hensler. Then my ticket said Miriam Hart. I'm like, oh, it's all good. And he's like, okay. And he just lets me go through. Oh. So I got through. So it's all good. What? Finessing. As Finessing. Always. Um, I don't know if I can share this on that, whatever. But anyways, on the airplane, um, the, oh yeah. So I was crying the entire time. Like the entire time I was crying, I was asking for oh more God. napkins. I was like, do you have more napkins? You know, like literally crying the entire time. Yeah. And I couldn't, I felt so claustrophobic, like being, I was in the window seat. I just couldn't sit there anymore. I got up after like 30 minutes and it's a six hour flight, you know? It's a long flight. Yeah. yeah. I got up after like 30 minutes of like, like I'm, I'm going to like have a panic attack sitting right. in the seat, go to the back of the plane. And then the, one of the ladies, like the, what are they called? flight attendants yeah she saw that I was like distressed and she's like she said to me honey are you okay <laughs> you're <laughs> like I want to jump out of the plane and then, and, said, and then I just started crying and I just said I just broke up with my oh girlfriend. my god <laughs> yeah and then she's like oh honey and then after that I just sat in the back of the plane talking about love with these two flight attendants and them giving me just like about love yeah and just like they're like well if it's meant to be it'll happen in the future you know like and all these things I'm like, that's it's just bullshit <laughs> but whatever you think it's bullshit yeah. But, um, yeah, just pro tip. Don't do that no, ever. Go just on a flight after breaking up. Or after you run a marathon either. Cause I feel like you'll oh, get that's sick. that's true. You did that too. Yeah. So just be careful with yourself. You're hopping on flights at all the wrong <laughs> times, girl. Mm-hmm. So anything else we should say about, oh, oh yeah. That we did do. Oh a, my God. That, yeah. So we may have done a trip together after that <laughs> together too. Yeah. I mean, I still don't regret that trip, though. No, I mean, we had a good time. Yeah, but, we, like, yeah. it was, like, very, not weird. I wouldn't say it was awkward between us. Like, okay, first it few was hours the first was few awkward. Hours. awkward. But... We had our hiccups. <laughs> we did have our hiccups. I was upset at you every now and then. Yeah. Um, But overall, I think it was a good trip. Overall, I agree. So what happened was we basically had planned out this trip before we broke up. And then uh, we decided to go on it anyways as like a last hurrah because we broke up so suddenly. I don't know if I recommend it, honestly. 
I mean, like, I don't regret it. Like, I'm happy that yeah, we did it. Yeah, I don't it. regret it either, but, like... Like, we had a good time. Is it a smart thing to do? I don't think so. I think it's, like, it really depends. Yeah. You have to know your partner and know... I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Do whatever feels good. Mm -hmm. um, but we did that. We did that, and then we were planning... We were about to be in Italy for 10 days, driving around there. Um, and then we made it longer. We extended and went it. went to Spain yeah. for, like, five days. For, like, a week. For a week, so we yeah. obviously didn't want this vacation to end. Your sister also came down to yeah. us. <laughs> it was a girl's trip, much I was about joined. to be the whole family coming down to Alicante. Yeah. Um, it was really fun. It was fun, but then we had a little fallout after again. Yeah, because then it was like we, I like the feelings were redeveloped and it was like very difficult. Yeah. We were also so not in sync with our emotions. Like, yeah. right after we went to Spain and I was going back, I had told myself, like, we're not getting back together. Like, don't get your hopes up. Like, da 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 da. We go home, and then you're the one who's like calling me, like super sad, and like I don't know what we're doing, you know? Yeah. And then once your emotions were like cooled down, right? Then my kicked in because yeah. like I wasn't stressed those first few days because I don't know why either. I just like didn't think about it. I just wasn't sad. I didn't cry the first three days, and then when you stopped oh, Lord. crying, I was like wait, why are we doing this again? <laughs> you know, so it's like, we were always like, I don't know. We were just not in sync with our yeah. emotions. Yeah. I feel like we just made ourselves. it was like pretty heavy for both of us. Because totally. you'd be like, you know, pouring your emotions on me for three days and then I would be pouring my emotions on right. you for three days. And it was just like, emotional roller coaster. Yeah. And then we got, we decided, we called it. We weren't together we anymore. Called it quits. Yeah. Didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I mean, like we, and then we took a, a pretty long break. Yeah, we did. We, we didn't like, talk didn't to each really other. talk to each other. I muted you on social media. I muted you. Um, yeah, <laughs> you remember that. <laughs> it was like watching my stories, the first one. And then at some point, like no more watching my mm -hmm. stories. I was obviously looking if you were looking, but of course, of um, course I was. Yeah. We muted each other on social media. We didn't talk or text. For a little while. I don't remember. No, I think we did that intentionally. Like we did that with the intention of like, we, we made these promises to each other when we broke up and we still have kept to those promises. I think yeah. of like, we will never be petty. We're never going to like delete things on social media. We will always prioritize like friendship and love for each other mm -hmm. and always keep trust for each other. Yeah. And like we made these promises to each other and we have yet to break these promises, you know, like, yeah, go and us. Go us. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I think how we handled our entire relationship for the most part, we are young. This is my first time being in love and like, you know, and for you also one of your first even still and like second, second, but still, I think that we but handled yeah. everything really well. And even then, on top of all this, a show came out about us being madly in love with each other oh, yeah. and we had to be at the premiere together watching us kissing and being in the room for, for, with each other for the first time in like three months too. Yeah. Like all of that was happening at the same time. And yeah. I think it's so cool that right now we're sitting together doing this podcast. And like at the end of the day, I think we both care about each other, each other so deeply mm -hmm. that like it's, we both know it's just going to be okay. Whatever happens yeah. between us, you know, in the future, which is, I think it is in a way like a happily ever after, like, even though we're not together, just our relationship, how it panned out mm -hmm. for the most part is a like a modern day happily ever after in that sense, yeah. you know? We didn't U-Haul, but we, we didn't stayed friends afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We didn't U-Haul, but we bought condos nearby and <laughs> have other people living in them. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah. So now what do you mean by that? <laughs> what does that mean? What do you mean? We bought con condos nearby. Yeah, like, like we're still friends, but we're not living together and we're oh. like seeing other people and like it's oh. all good. Okay. That's what I meant by it. A weird analogy. Yeah, I was like, what does that mean? Mm hmm. Um, yeah. That's Any advice you want, want to give people in relationships or anything that like they can share? Um, I think we were really good at communicating, but I do think we should have been better at having our own lives more separately. Like, I think my roommate has a super healthy relationship to her boyfriend. And they're just like, you know, she, it's never a time where I feel like, oh, she's never with us. She's always with her boyfriend. Like, they're just so good at, like, combining, like, hanging out with friends or being together. They just have a really good balance. 
And that's something that I'm really going to like in my next relationship. I, I think it's so healthy to keep your own lives a little bit separate, like bring them together, but also like make sure you like have your own people and like your own things to do. So you also like miss each other more. Like we were together pretty intensely. Totally. Um, so I definitely think that that's something that we could have done better or that I learned from it. Mm -hmm. um, from our breakup, I think... I'm like a person who wants to get to the bottom of everything. Like I always want to know, like, or try to understand. I feel, I always like feel like if I understand something, it will be better or easier for me to get over it. But it's just not the case. Like you can't understand someone else's feelings. It's very hard to like lo make someone's feelings logical. Like I never mm. thought your feelings were that logical. Right. So it's hard to like have understanding then. So right. you kind of just have to like, accept that it is what it is it's someone's feelings you can't like you can't always understand them it's just what they're feeling so just kind of like try to let it go in your head and focus on other things than solving or cracking the mystery of why someone like doesn't either isn't in love with you or anymore or like i don't know doesn't want to be with you anymore mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's good advice <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if i have anything to add um i think did you learn I think just trying to be as upfront as possible always. Like, I think one thing that I like should have done in our relationship from the get go is say, like, I am so interested in school at Stanford, like from the get go, just so you know, like that seed's planted in your head, you know? And like, but I don't think that you didn't do that. I didn't do that. Right? No. Cause like in the beginning, when you were thinking about not going back, I was like, no, you should go back. Right. You know? And you were like, no, I want to study at Stanford. I just like, didn't know that you wanted to study another year at Stanford. Mm -hmm. So I think I should have said that I was thinking about that too early, like, you know, like just like being as open as you can with a person from as soon as possible so that they yeah. have like seeds planted in their head about things. So that things don't come as a surprise to, um, I don't think it can be surprising. me. But yeah, I think just, even if it's not for our relationship, I think in general, that's like a good yeah. thing to do. I hear you. Um, yeah, that'd be a piece of my advice. And then I don't know. That's it. That's all that's come to mind. I think we gave a lot of lessons in this, honestly, just by like sharing our story. Uh huh. And yeah, so I think that's it. Thanks, Snap, for coming on to the. Wait, this is it? Yeah. Anything oh else? my God, that's crazy. That's we talked about our relationship. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Wait, I want to think if someone asks something, like we have to go through where we are now. Let's do yeah, that. Sure. Okay, now, where are you at now in terms of, I guess, relationships? Because I guess we're talking about relationships. Like if I have any new relationships? Or like, oh yeah, what's the story? Oh my goodness. Well, uh, I don't want to have a relationship right now. I am still super uncertain with my life in America. Mm -hmm. I have not. Um, well, I mean, I do have this amazing new job, but I still don't know my future here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to get into something not knowing where I want to live or like, you know, it's just too much uncertainty. Like you'll never be certain, but like I'm in a like position extremely. of extreme uncertainty. Yeah. Like I can be out here not too long. So um, just like focusing on myself, my career a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really looking for anything right now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Me too. I'm also just in the same, I mean, I'm in score right now. I'm focusing on that. And then also my podcast and mm -hmm. life and like, I don't, I think like being in a state, what I've learned from being a relationship is that it's t like very serious and like, I takes up a lot of a person. And so, and that's good, but you have to want that, you know? Since I'm not in a place right now where I want that. And so, sure. yeah. Cool. Well, that's it. Those are our updates on our love lives. Yeah. And yeah. I want to say kisses bitches with me. That's how I exit the podcast. Kisses bitches. Kisses bitches. That's how I exit it. You want to do it with me? Rhyme. It's a loose rhyme. I learned this in my poetry class. Kisses bitches. Yeah, you ready? Kisses bitches. <laughs> I feel so good. Okay, I can cut that out. Cringe. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. <laughs> Not staying cool. it.